Hello students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and Module 7 on Organic Chemistry. This is video number 3 and it's the third in our series of nomenclature videos. In this particular one we're going to be focusing on the aldehydes and the ketones. Now you remember that each time we look at the nomenclature of our organic groups, what we're trying to do is to look at straight chains up to 8 carbons in length with potentially um, side chains or side branches of one to two carbons in length and then changing our functional groups each time so that we get a look at a, a range of different types of organic compounds. So in this particular video we're going to be concentrating on the aldehydes and the ketones. So the first one that we want to have a look at is this particular one here. So what you can see that I have here is a molecule with three carbons, one, two, and three, and a, an oxygen that's attached to the end carbon, the number one carbon, uh, with a double bond. So this is slightly different to what we've looked at before when we were looking at our hydroxyl groups. Now we're looking at an oxy group, and that is double bonded to one of our carbons. Now the reason that we put the two groups of aldehydes and ketones together is because they are both characterized by the double bonded oxygen, but the place of, those, um, of that oxygen differs, and that's how we tell the difference between an aldehyde and a ketone. Now aldehydes and ketones are both the more um, common names for the groups that we need to actually remember when we're naming them. So first of all, I guess, and most importantly, a definition which will help us, which is that hydrocarbons that contain a double bonded oxygen on an end carbon are our aldehydes. Now, aldehydes is the, uh, as I said, the common name. The more correct uh, UPAC name is alkanal. So very similar to the alcohols, that only this letter um, has changed from an O to an A, an alkanal. So when we're naming them, again, we remember that we've got a prefix and a suffix. So the prefix is the number of carbons and the suffix is our functional group. So therefore, if we go back to the compound that we just looked at a moment ago, which is this one, we have one, two, three carbons. And so therefore, three carbons is prop. And the end of this, the functional group, is the and now, so this particular compound over here is propanal. Now the other important thing is that if we draw this, we've got a double bonded oxygen under hydrogen, and then remembering we just want to make sure we've got four bonds around our carbons. Uh, make sure that you count them so that you've got four around each of your carbons, which double checks that um, you've, you've got everything that you need. So we can then identify the formula here, C3H, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and a note. Propanal um, does not need a number. The reason that it does not need a number is because if we switch this to the other end, and the simplest way for me to do that is just to rotate the molecule. Now it's on the opposite end, and so you can see it hasn't changed its position. There's no one propanal or propan one al um, that's there's no um, uh, need for us to number this and in fact there isn't any need to number any of these um, aldehydes because the carbon attaching to the oxygen is always going to be an end carbon and therefore it's always going to be the number one carbon so unless there are other groups associated and we will look at multiple groups at uh, in later videos uh, at this stage, we're just focusing on each of the individual groups, so that's where this would uh, occur. Of course, if you had a methyl group, so if I change uh, and put a methyl group onto the end of my middle carbon, obviously if I put it onto the end carbon, it becomes butanal rather than um, some version of propanal. But you can see now I've added a methyl group, so this methyl group will mean that I will need to change my name with an extra prefix, which is the methyl, and then propanal. The 
other group that we want to have a look at in this particular video are the ketones. Now, the easiest way, and if I just um, remove my methyl group and go back to my original molecule, which was propanol, if I want to turn propanol into propanone, which is the name, uh, the correct name for the uh, corresponding ketone, then all I'm going to do is switch one of these carbons uh, from one end to the other, which now means that my double bonded oxygen is on the central carbon. It's not on an end carbon. Okay, we can have seven of these in a row and it can be on the two, three, four, five, uh, or six carbon as long as it's not on either end uh, of one or seven, then you're going to have a ketone. Now a ketone is a, a hydrocarbon which contains a double bonded oxygen on a non-terminal carbon. So if, for example, I had a carbon compound with seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, and say I had it on this particular carbon, and again, as I go through, I put all of my bonds in. And you can see how easy it is to make little mistakes when you're in a rush. Uh, we're wanting to make sure that we show the correct position of all of these uh, bonds, including the bonds between the carbon and the oxygen, as well as the carbons and the hydrogens and any others that occur there. So here's a long chain of carbons. I have seven carbons all together, so that would be hept. I have a double bonded oxygen, but the double bonded oxygen is on a central carbon, not on an end carbon, and so therefore it's heptanone. But you can see, unlike with the uh, aldehyde where it can only be on an end carbon. Now we have a couple of options of where this particular double bonded oxygen could be. This is what we're talking about with ambiguity. If there is more than one place where your double bonded oxygen could go, then we need a number to help us to clarify that. So therefore, if I count from this end, one, two, three, and number four. If I count from this end, one, two, three, still number four. So heptanone is not the correct name for this particular one. I need to be more specific. So heptan for own. This way we locate the double bonded oxygen, which is the functional, functional group for this particular compound. And we know that it's occurring uh, at location number four or carbon number four. And the hept indicates that we've got seven carbons in our carbon compound. The one that I looked at earlier, so the one that's here, we should be able to name this now. You can see there's one, two, three carbons all together. And so um, because it's coming off a central carbon, it's going to be a ketone or an alkanone is the IUPAC group. That's more correct. So the anone bit is the ending that you're wanting to add. And the alk bit is what's going to be substituted with the number of uh, carbons. So in this case, three, so it's prop. The fact that the double bonded oxygen is on a middle carbon, not on an end, means it's propanone. And it can't be anything other than propanone because if the double bonded oxygen was on an end, it would be propanol, as we looked at in the previous slide. Again, this is a group that needs a little bit of practice, so uh, keep working through. Look at some of your side chains, side branches as well as varying the position of each of these. And, uh, and the more practice you get, the more comfortable you'll get with naming. Thanks for watching.